Good morning. morning. One more time. Good morning. morning. On behalf of the Grayson family and the center that cares, we pause to thank you for sharing in this, for us, historic moment. Three years ago today, around two o'clock in the morning, a phone rung and we received the most unbelievable message in our life that our son Jerron Xavier Grayson had been shot and ultimately passed from gun violence. Jerron was a wonderful young man with personality, swag, and presence, and uh, an athlete, most valuable player for Shumley High School, and wanted to go to Hampton University, his choice, and went off to Hampton University in Virginia and came home for the first time and went to a party at Cal U's homecoming and tragically someone took a gun and shot through the door and he lost his life. But our family has decided that tragedy can define you and we decided that we would make good of a bad situation. And so, October 17, 2011, a year to the date of his passing, by the grace of God and the help and support of Benny, the Senate at KS purchased the former Oldenham to be named after Jerron Xavier Grayson as the Jerron Xavier Grayson Community Center. And two years later, we come again today to break ground, to symbolically let the world know in the community Thank you, Kenny, and the foundations and the corporate foundations for their support to make this day possible. A couple months ago, a young man, another college student, was athlete, was gunned down. And they asked the perpetrators why. And they said, we were bored. We were bored. And took a gun and took a young man's life. A few days ago, October 8th, another parent, just like every day, another parent would receive that phone call that their innocent son and homeward was at the bus stop minding his own business. And a 16-year-old, a 16-year-old who can't be tried as an adult shy of two days, allegedly shot him not once, not twice, not three times, but seven times, and the last time, like, like a mafia style, however, and took him out, bearing again another African-American gifts and talents gone forever, never fulfilling his purpose and his dreams. And we say through CARES, and we've been impacting the lives of young people for over 14 years, that enough is enough, that through this building we hope to provide positive alternatives, a healthy environment, to young people that they make better choices and not bad choices. So we're grateful today for all those who played a role in making this possible, for our architect, Newton O'Gott, who thought it not robbery without 10 cents, went to Pat and Penn and his gifts and talents and pulled together the architectural renderings that we could go forth and tell our story. For the selected general contractor, Paul, and for all those who are here who have played a role, both large and small, to make this day possible. But one entity, one person who, who poured, who wanted to make sure this day would take place, who kind of just said, this is, I want it to happen, is here to open us up with prayer. And as a person of Father Carmen D'Amico, a friend of mine, since the day I landed here, he had Jerron, because Jerron went to St. Benedict and he had some special Catholic moments where Sister Margie said, I can't do nothing with Jerron. And so, <laughs> calling the enforcer. So, Father Carmen came and tried to talk to Jerron and say, Jerron, you know, you can't cut your hair and, you know, put glue in it. And <laughs> So he has a wonderful history with our son and making this day possible, as well as St. Benedict the Moor and Catholic Charities. So we, at this time, we'll ask Father Carmen D'Amico to come and give us our invocation for today.
Thank you so much just for uh, having me here. And I'm just going to ask now God's blessing upon us on this important day. Oh God, your passion is for your people. You love us so deeply and so much. You continue to pour out your love upon us. Help us, Lord, to embrace that love so that we understand that our love for you is expressed in our love for one another. Lord, we thank you for this day. We see in our own lives and we see here today the way that you make for us. You turn obstacles into opportunities. You always make a way for us. Bless this groundbreaking of the Duran Xavier Grace and Community Center. Lord, bless it so that this is the beginning of many, many good things. So that many young people will come to know their value and worth. And come to know their goodness. And see that goodness not only expressed in what they can do. But see that goodness in what others do too. Bless the works of the Center that Cares. Bless the works of Wesley Center AME Zion Church. Bless the Grace and Family, Lord. We continue to ask you to lift them up to ease burdens, to fill joy. Continue, Lord, to bless this community of the Hill District, this community that has brought so much life and goodness to the city of Pittsburgh. Bless this neighborhood, bless this ground, and make it holy. And we make this prayer as we always do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's keep to our two minutes or less. <laughs> So at this time, another friend and brother who we pray that we know will help take the city to the next level. Real quick readings from Councilman Bill Perdue at this time. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, Father, as you know, as Catholics, uh, many times during blessings, the priest will come around with holy water and bless us. So the raindrops are nothing more than the blessing. Um, you know, autumn is my favorite season. I, I love everything about it. I love the weather. I love the, the leaves turning colors. I love being able to put on sweaters so I can hide uh, some of my... Uh... But the thing about autumn, too, is it's, it's, it's a season of change. When I came here, I, I said I'm only going to be positive because what's happening today is positive. But then I didn't realize that today was the third year anniversary. And it's hard to be positive with that in your mind. Uh, to Grace and family, to my friend, Pastor, um, our hearts of all of us are with you. Um, it's, it's special that it's today because as you look around and you see all the beautiful parts of autumn, you also realize that the next season that will be coming is winter. And this building is in its winter phase. This building saw so much great activity. People can tell stories from generations how it transformed young people's lives. But now it sits there vacant, broken in its winter stage. And today we're breaking through that winter season and we're starting into spring. And this beautiful picture in front of me is the hope of what this center will do. But what it's going to do is change the lives of hundreds, maybe thousands of young people. It's a testament to the of life, of how life changes, and how you can take something that is a bad thing and turn it into something that will have a great benefit for so many more people. Many of the kids that are going to go through here will never have heard of Jerome. It'll just be a name on the side of the building. But because of an incident that happened three years ago, it could have crippled a community. It could have destroyed a family. We're here today to celebrate something that is great. Thank you for letting me be a small little part of it. At this time, our board chair for the Senate Cares, Gerald Smith, will come and bring welcome and greetings on behalf of the Senate Cares Board, Gerald Smith. Good morning. Good morning. It's going to be a glorious day despite the rainfall. Yes. Members of the Board of Cares, our distinguished guests and staff and friends and family, my name is Geraldine Smith and I'm the chairperson for the board of the board for the Center That Cares. It is with pleasure that I welcome you today. This is going to be a remarkable day, a new breath for this new program. Today marks the beginning of a long-awaited renovation project. The design and development requiring the support of everyone gathered here and not gathered here today will soon begin. Today we say goodbye to a building that even I grew up known as the Ozenam Cultural Center. Opened in 1970 by Frederick Ozenam, 
at a low point in the history in the Hill District. During a time of rioting and violence and, and, and crime and neglect, its purpose was to offer an area for, for youth to go to be safe and to socialize. Tutoring and an after-school program began, and it was to give them a sense of purpose and hope and to be able to help them and provide them with some part-time work. And a board that gave parents a voice and a sense of purpose in the inner workings of this building. And today we say hello to the Jerron Xavier Grayson Community Center. The center that cares opened in 2000 by Reverend Glenn G. Grayson. At the beginning of those years, it was a time when education was failing us where our children weren't achieving at levels that were expected of them to prepare them for either higher education or even just the workforce, where our children lacked proficiency in math and reading measured by state-required standards, during some of the lowest economical times in the city. And during, it's a purpose in its name is a place for children. The purpose of CARES is in its name. It's a place for children, young and old alike, to be able to acquire the necessary skills to be able to get them where they need to be. How fitting on this anniversary of the short life of Jerron that we can unlock, renew, redesign, refresh, recreate, and reestablish his dream, his dad's dream, and the dream of Frederick Ozenam to provide both an educational and a cultural activities to children, youth, and young adults all year round. A safe haven away from the violence and turmoil that our young people face each and every day. And we hope and we pray and we pray and we hope that our planning, purpose, and our preparation strengthens the community, its families, and the businesses. In closing, a special word to the founder and the staff from the board, whom without his vision, we would not be here today. And with his family's backing, the same. And without the hard work and dedication of that staff who believe in the visionary and the program and the children, I say thank you, thank you, and thank you. To our, to our funders, we say thank you. Who, the list falls behind me, but I'd like to say thank you to Eden Hall Foundation, the McCauley Ministries, Allegheny County Department of Economical Development, Pittsburgh Foundation, R.K. Mellon Foundation, Hines Endowments, Urban Redevelopment Authority of Pittsburgh, the Hines Foundation, Highmark Foundation, Duquesne Light Power of Light Project, Buell Foundation, the Chuck Sanders Foundation, the Grayson Family, Second Chance Foundation, Community Donations, and Dollar Bank. On behalf of the board for the Center That Cares, we welcome you and say thank you for making this day our reality. Thank you. Board Chair, Geraldine Smith. There's so many people, like she mentioned, who played a role in terms of making this possible. I've asked just one of the many foundation persons to speak because Michelle Cooper has been a friend to the Hill District. Uh, since the inception of McCauley Ministry and the whole Sisters of Mercies and the work that they do, Hill District and uh, Uptown and West Oakland. Uh, she has partnered with us both on the uh, brick and mortar side and also on the programmatic side, allowing our young people to travel to New York and to North Carolina, to Tennessee, to see Broadway plays, to go to Jamaica, to be called and to develop what we call our Macaulay Fellows who go on to graduate and become professors. <coughs> we ask Michelle Cooper to come and bring you on some behalf of just herself, uh, Macaulay Ministries, and the Foundation. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And uh, Reverend Grayson, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this important day. What a wonderful way to honor Duran's memory. Uh, last year, Sister Patricia, who is a member of the Macaulay Ministries Board, and I toured this facility. And um, if you look at it now, it, it might be difficult to see the potential, but we could see the potential. And more importantly, we heard the vision 
of Reverend Grayson and his team. You know, our children don't always understand that they have gifts, that they have potential, that they have promise, that they have a purpose that God has given them. And what we appreciate about the Center that Cares is that they deposit that in our young children. And so we're very happy to be a part of this project and we look forward to the great works that you will do. Thank you. This time we'll have remarks from uh, Daniel Avell, Jay Wheatley, Richard Cheryl, and we call construction. Thank you, Ed. It's, it's still good morning, I do believe. Uh, but good morning to all of you. I get to see you again. Most of you were at the groundbreaking opening, excuse me, for the grocery store a minute ago. So this is truly a wonderful day to be in the village. Reverend Grayson. Thank you for your vision, um, for bringing this back. There are some things in a community, if you've grown up in that community, you know the significance of it. And the Ozanam Cultural Center, or as when I grew up, we just called it the OZ, um, it has that level of significance to this community because of the lives that it protected, the lives that it nurtured. Unfortunately, because this was in the middle here, as a kid, I wasn't always allowed to venture down here by myself. Um, but whenever I could, what I really came for was legendary basketball games. Right. The legendary folk that came out of this center and whose lives were nurtured. And to be able to get back to that, to be able to work with so many of the youth who you're already working with through your programs and expand their worldview to really raise them up to understand what they can be is so significant. Um, so again, I just really want to thank you. Thank everyone that's here. This is truly wonderful. Uh, me and Rich have been joking the last few weeks. We keep seeing each other at a number of events. And that's a good thing. That means this community is on the move. This is but another example of where our community is really headed. So thank you again for all that you're doing for this community. You have no idea to those who are indigenous here how much this means to us. So thank you. Again. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. It's a beautiful day to be in the hill. But uh, many of you who are from the Hill know that every day is a beautiful day to be in the Hill. I'm not one to, uh, to, to like to boast and brag, but I will tell you this. Daniel Lavelle, Rich, um, the future mayor of the city, Bill Peduto, Reverend Grayson, you all know we have a wonderful community. And it's wonderful because of not necessarily all the institutions that we have here, but the people who make these institutions great. And as many of you know, who live in the Hill, or maybe not from the Hill, the Grayson family are like family to so many of us. So what I'm excited about is to see this center that represent one of their members who was lost so young, be a beacon of light and hope for others so they have a chance to do something great with themselves. And so the G Center, because those who know the young man know that that's what they used to refer to him. And I'm sure, Daniel, like you remember this as OZ, this will be remembered as the G Center. <laughs> and it will be a haven for young folk who will come somewhere and be nurtured, be loved, and be taught something. And that's really what community and family is all about. So I want to say thank you, Reverend Grayson, for blessing my life, but so many other lives, and the Grayson family, because you can't do it by yourself. Although that suit is amazing, man. I like it. <laughs> Thank you all. We look forward to not only this celebration, but when we come back to really open this up and all participate as one big family and one great community. Community. So thank you for all who have played a role, and we look forward to making sure this comes off the way that we all want it to. So thank you. Reverend, I, I want to thank you, and uh, I want to thank, I don't know which one of you is responsible for stopping that rain, but that's good. <laughs> Bill's right, they just a little holy water, and then they stop, they don't keep coming with it, that's the way Catholics work it. Um, but anyway, um, it's a special day, and um, uh, as a father, um, and as a father of a Shenley grad, my daughter graduated from Shenley, so I, I, I feel a real, real connection, and, and the fact that you and your family we're taking something that was a tragedy and turning into something positive uh, for, for future uh, uh, kids and future part uh, of the community is, is, is a 
great testament to you and your family, and we want to thank you. I certainly thank you for that. Um, Daniel, you're right. There's so many good things happening uh, in this community right now. It's like every other day we're at something that it's, 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 it continues to grow and it continues to be good on, on housing, cultural institutions, and, and, and the, the ending of the food desert. Um, and, and now, you know, we're, we're making a healthy community. We're making a healthy community with food and with the library and with the, the YMCA, and now culturally, spiritually, and, and in ways to, to, to connect people in the community. And that's what this, this community center will do. Uh, all of us in Pittsburgh remember the, the glory days of Ozan Am and this, this, this institution. And now to, 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 to carry it on in Jerron's uh, memory and his name and to be an example for what's good, what good values that your, that your institution and you and your family represent is, is absolutely terrific. So uh, it, it's, a great, it's a day to celebrate, it's, it's a day to remember, and it's a day to, to, to know that the good things about this community will continue on and continue on into the future. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to see everybody here today. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for, uh, and Reverend Grayson, the funders, the city, the county, for giving us the opportunity to be part of this. When I first met uh, Reverend Grayson, we were looking at this as just a basic project. In the hour that I think that we had our first hour of our first meeting, I found out that we weren't just working on a construction project, we had a mission to fulfill. And going through the whole project with Milton, uh, Reverend, his family, everyone involved in it, that's truly what it's become. We've gone through some trials and some tribulations getting this thing started. Uh, it's coming out of the ground now. We're very pleased and very happy to be part of it. And thank you all. And in about six and a half months right now, we'll be back here to see the project completed. And uh, thanks again for all your, thank your help. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, the dignitaries on the inside. We can close out our last um, uh, closing prayer. Uh, Reverend Smith, oh, Reverend Rigby, I've asked you to, uh, Reverend Rigby will close up some prayer. We invite everyone inside for a tour of the building, and then we'll have some refreshments uh, on the inside. We'll transform there. Let's give it for one of our local pastors, been a friend and a brother, who really, the Lord told, used him to tell me to shift, and that's why we did today. God, we thank you for raining on us your grace and your mercies. We're grateful, God, for this day because indeed it doesn't mark the endings, but it marks new beginnings. We realize, God, that the work that we do is not in vain, but indeed as we reach up to you, we reach out to young people who are lost. And we pray that this center would indeed be a place of shelter and of sanctuary. We pray also that we be reminded of your word that says, except the Lord build a house, yes. they labor in vain that build it. And so today, God, we put all of this in your hands. Lord, we ask you to make it possible. We ask you to rebuild it from the inside out, from the top down, from the bottom up, so that, Lord, your spirit might always abide here, and that we might always have the longing memory of our friend, of our brother, of our son. We pray, God, that we would never forget Tehran, his swag and his style. And that, Lord, as we remember him, that we might be able to impart a hope inside the lives of those younger people that will go beyond and for years and years to come. May our memories that we shared of this place now be renewed because we understand that out of our griefs, you bring glory. Out of our pains, you bring power. And so today, out of our sorrow, bring celebration. Bless this grace and family, we pray. That God, you might always hold them and give them vision and give them clarity of thought so that, Lord, they might always impact the lives of your people. And then we ask your blessings upon every donor, every sponsor, everyone that has come together and garnered their forces politicians, community leaders. We ask that they all would be recognized and that you would share your spirit with them. So today, God, we celebrate you and what you are about to do in the rising from the ashes of this place. Let it be new again 
And let us, as we go in, let us realize, God, that you make no mistakes. Bless us now all we pray. In Christ's name, amen. amen. amen.